Hello and a very warm welcome. You are watching The Wire Wrap. I am Stravasti Das Gupta. The results of the state assembly elections in Haryana and the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir have been declared just on Tuesday. And we've got a surprise in one state in a sense and uh, not so surprising in another uh, Union Territory. So the, uh, in Haryana, the Congress has been uh, defeated even though they were dipped, uh, pipped to be the favourites. The BJP is on set to form its third consecutive government uh, in the state which is a record for the BJP and in Jammu and Kashmir, the national conference which had tied up with uh, the Congress um, is on set to form the government and uh, as the results stand right now, uh, they perhaps would not even have needed the Congress uh, if we go by how the seats have come out. Uh, joining me today is MK Venu, he's founding editor at The Wire and Maya Mirchandani, she's a senior journalist, you must have seen her on TV for many years. Thank you so much for joining us. First, let's get started with Haryana, which is what I think everybody is uh, kind of talking about. Congress was pipped to be the favourites, but uh, a very comfortable majority for the BJP defeating anti-incumbency in the state as well. Um, but for the first time, perhaps the Congress has said that they don't accept this uh, verdict calling it unacceptable. They've visited the election commission yesterday. They've spoken about batteries in the EVMs um, being the, some disparity in that. How do you see the, uh, the elections in Haryana, your first thoughts and this EVM bogey that is being raised with an unacceptable verdict being brought up by the Congress? So, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the EVM uh, uh, issue separately. Uh, but overall, uh, on the on Haryana elections, I'm still convinced that the the tailwinds were with the Congress, which shows in the way they had a huge bump up they got in their vote share, 28 to 39, right uh, thereabouts. And BJP, uh, the problem with Congress was if if it had fought the election. Uh, if they that put in a little more hard work on the ground, and if they had if, if they managed to control uh, inner party, you know, uh, dissensions, you know, especially between Huda and uh, uh, the other big leader, big face Dalit face Shelja Kumari, uh, which BJP was making a big issue of how Congress was insulting uh, Dalit leader by you know not giving her a due. If and if Rahul Gandhi had uh, had gone there. Uh, Many more times uh, in the run up to the election, not necessarily during the campaign period, and uh, maybe address maybe a uh, half a dozen more rallies with Shelja Kumari and Huda both with him. Uh, if the messaging would have been a little more, uh, you know, organic and uh, gone down to the people, the different castes, uh, Congress might have. Got an additional one and a half two percent percentage point votes, uh, given that that the tailwinds were with them. So I think they just they just couldn't uh, get that last mile, you know, uh, vote. And BJP held on to its vote bank, and they, I mean, you don't have to say that they're very good at, you know, keeping their uh, consolidating their votes, right? So, so if the Congress had managed that little extra one or two percent. Results could have been different. So, would you say that they, with them going to the EC and saying that this raising this whole EVM no, so issue, no, I'm coming to the EC. Is it no, grapes being sour? No, no, no. no. I, so, Congress itself is saying that they have found that in some districts, they, 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 they have detected EVMs showing in the same booth, showing uh, uh, in the same center. Some EVM showing 99% uh, you know, uh, battery <laughs> charge, the other showing less. Now, I, I don't know the technicalities of this. E EC has come up with its own explanation. Now, when the Congress says that there, there were big variations in the in the battery charge, what they are trying to imply is that uh, some, you know, some new EVMs were introduced, otherwise EVM battery charge should be more uniform. Uh, I don't know about the technicality of this, but I at the same time, Savasi, I am 100% convinced that that some traditional style rigging is always possible and it possibly also happens. So, so here is my simple logic. When, when, when we had uh, uh, when we ballot paper system, 
there was always there were always complaints of rigging right stuffing of ballot paper but it needed much more effort uh, you need you need much more muscle gundas much more capture of booth to stuff in ballot paper now what can happen uh, which i don't rule out is that if you control the the officials and the people in the booth and if the opposition uh, uh, people are not uh, sort of uh, manning the booth or they are not alert enough then you can just keep pushing the button right <laughs> you see the voters listen to the button i'm saying it's it's a possibility and uh, i feel that although i i don't say that this is it has happened in this election but i feel that the ec election commission owes it to the people of this country to to clear some of these many of these doubts including the original one which is the missing 19 lakh uh, evms you know uh, you know th this was this was revealed by by an rti and when election commission was asked where are these 19 lakh missing evms so they gave a very kind of uh, routine reply saying that that some of them have might have been used by local panchayat elections so we don't know they uh, supervise their own evms we, we don't go into get into those uh, you know the local election uh, you know uh, administration etc at, at the at the you know th third tier and all so i don't know we we need we need answers my what do you think about this whole evm uh, concern that is being raised by the congress uh, on one hand one would say that they should take this time to introspect perhaps that in an election which was for them to win they have lost that and perhaps the seat margin is not so wide nine seats i mean now with the uh, three independents joining the bjp it's wider but uh, the fact is that the vote share has been absolutely neck and neck 0.08% difference but for them to now say that there's some possible rigging in the evms going to the ec saying that the verdict is not uh, not acceptable to them uh, how, how do you see this whole thing look um i think the reality is that the congress has lost i mean in, if you look up the way the numbers have stacked up fair and square the congress has lost having said that this is the first time in many of the recent polls that they've actually gone to the election commission with a complaint about the evms i think it was a case of some which had 70% battery charge were seen to have voted a certain way and some which had 99% seen to have voted a certain way uh, the vote tallied a certain way now whether this is true false if there is a formal complaint before the election commission the election commission has no choice but to investigate the matter and i think we'll have to just live with whatever the findings are uh the point venu made about old style manipulation um <clears throat> intimidation voters list things like that <clears throat> i think this is all in the realm of speculation and there'll be lots of post poll alliance um uh, analysis <clears throat> looking at all this what does seem evident is that where the congress is going it alone um they're not doing as well as they are when they have an alliance partner so the fact that there were not any pre poll alliances that they were able to stitch up in haryana has it impacted them wrongly considering whether it was agnivir whether it was the farmers agitations whether it was the women's wrestlers various issues that everyone said everybody got the haryana election wrong so i think it does beg the question that how could everybody have got it wrong I mean, one possible explanation for this could be the fact that since the vote shares are uh, so close, that people who did go to the ground and picked up on this hawa in favor of the Congress is obviously reflected in that vote share, but it has not translated to the seat See. share. So, and and this is also another point that has been raised several times since Tuesday is the fact that the vote share and the seat share uh, translation is quite odd in the sense that if the vote share is so close, then the seat. Margin should not be so wide. How must one see this? See, the, you know, you can't uh, statistically, you know, such configurations have happened before. Also, vote shares are the same. Sometimes even one party has a higher vote share, but it has less seats. We've seen that also. So, how this plays out uh, is a matter of, uh, 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 you know, th these are statistical possibilities which can cannot be. Uh, which we can't rule out uh, frankly especially in haryana uh, savasti 
I, I was I saw a list of some 18, 19 seats where there were rebel candidates of Congress who had uh, 10, 15,000 votes, 20,000 votes uh, and BJP's victory margin was uh, against Congress in those seats were 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 thereabouts. So, so now, which means, that, which means Congress did not manage its rebels well. So, th this this squarely falls uh, at the doorsteps of uh, Bhupendra Singh Huda. There are also rumours that, now how much to believe these rumours one doesn't know, that Huda himself uh, did not want a, a, a kind of landslide victory for Congress uh, and if that had happened. Uh, I mean, these are rumors which, which I mean, uh, uh, floating around. You know that uh, if that had happened, then uh, Huda's uh, apprehension was that, uh, that that the central leadership would, uh, you know, fully dominate, uh, get hold of, you know, the uh, the whole government. Uh, basically, its influence in Haryana would increase central leadership. So Huda himself uh, wanted a victory, but. Uh, in the range of 55. No, I, I don't know if, if these are true, but, but, but what is definitely true is that when you see all the, uh, the, the, the rebel uh, Congress candidates, how much votes, uh, the, the number of votes they've got, and in those constituencies, BB, BJP winning by very small margin, uh, it, it, it kind of, uh, it does uh, raise some yeah, I mean, how, I how, how you how did you yeah. how so many rebels to prosper? So yeah? I think the fact is that the margins have been so small in some places that it, you know the, the the thing is that it could have gone either way. It could have been yeah, exactly. it could have been two hundred votes this way, two hundred votes that way. So why is it that it all the really close contests have gone in a particular direction? I think that's a question no, that see, could I'll, potentially I'll, be asked. But I, I also feel like two things. One that you said this infighting within the Congress mm -hmm. that everybody. It was in the public domain. Now, you could make the argument, as, as the Congress has done, that there is infighting in the BJP also. It's not that there isn't. And maybe we saw some of that play out in the Lok Sabha elections. The Congress makes its differences public and open and because it's a transparent party. Right? Wrong? I mean, I'm not being judgment. I mean, I'm not passing judgment on the merits of that argument. But I think a political party needs to be conscious when they're going into an election battlefield with a machine as strong as the BJP to manage their inner party conflicts a little better. I feel like that's not something they did effectively. And so a combination of that, the failure of a pre-poll alliance, <clears throat> the, the number of different smaller parties in uh, Haryana, we saw smaller groups in Jammu and Kashmir also this time. We'll get to that in a minute. But I think in Haryana, there was no decision by the, I mean, the, the fractured mandate essentially led to one win also. It was, that, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one, one simple mathematical formulation. BJP got 48 seats. Suppose in, in all these 17 seats, which I saw where margins were very small, uh, and there were rebel Congress candidates who really sort of cut into, uh, <clears throat> you know, damaged Congress. If, even if in five or six, if BJP, if they were not, if that damage hadn't happened, if six, BJP would have been, uh, had been less six, six seats, seven seats, uh, 48 to say 41 or 42, and Congress would have been up, say seven, say 35 to say four. It would have been a, even seat wise, it would, it would have been very, very close. Yeah, in some of yeah. the seats, it's been so close. For yeah. instance, in Uchana Kalyan, the, the margin is 32 seats. That's right. Yes. So, why is it like, so it's it's that 32 seats, 200 seats, some five, you know, like it's it's really. Really Time close. Time. And also, in uh, just to add on the rebels point, for instance, in Ambala Kant, Chitra Sarvara has got some 50,000 votes. So, that's like a massive number she's of votes. Rebel, right? She's a rebel. Yeah. And she's uh, Anil Vij has, of course, won that yeah. seat. Yeah. But it's a huge amount of votes. So, it does beg the question that if you had perhaps put your house in order, uh, in order would it have made a difference? And that that's a failure of the leadership, would you say? In, in allowing uh, Huda perhaps to have his way, there, there is word on the ground that he had sway over 70 of the 90 tickets, perhaps if, if there was a, uh, a wider inner party democracy, perhaps. Well, someone has to be accountable. So, if not it's the a, leadership, then who? It's a, it, it, there has been some goof up at the, uh, at, at, at Huda's leadership level, you know. At, uh, no, yeah. I'm I'm willing, not, not just the state leadership, I'm saying that the, the national leadership of the party. Um, 
also needs to be accountable. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And if we talk about the leadership, of course, the uh, the Congress made it very clear that they are trying to. It, it was a very clear uh, uh, election campaign around Jats with Hooda as his face, and uh, on the other side, the BJP made Saini the face, who was an OBC leader. It uh, helped them mobilize the non-Jats. There was resentment following the Jat agitation, which the BJP was, uh, one could say, able to capitalize on. But in uh, if we look at it from the BJP camp's point of view, with Amit Shah and. Uh, Narendra Modi taking a step back now for whatever reason one could say that they were anticipating defeat and therefore did not want to be seen that's one of the theories floating around but this time we saw that the lower rung the state uh, leadership kind of taking the center stage in Haryana do you see that as a changing point for the BJP perhaps in in electioneering uh I think while we may have seen it in Haryana because it was the first election after the Lok Sabha in a sense um <clears throat> I don't know if it will continue for the Maharashtra elections. Let's see how this one kind of propels the BJP leadership to go back. It's not that Prime Minister Modi did not do any rallies in Haryana. He did. Um, but he was less visible. But he was less visible. However, the day of these results, he came out and made a statement. After he, yeah, after won. he took the after, care, Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. After he won. So, I'm saying that, you know, given that... Will we see more of him on the campaign trail in Maharashtra? It's so entirely I, I, possible. I have a theory on this, which is, I was seeing the uh, election uh, reporting in, in Delhi newspapers. If BJP MLAs, MLA candidates were being quoted as saying that Modi is not a factor here. Indian Express candidate, Modi is not a factor here. I have, in the past, I have never heard, especially in a North Indian state, in any election, a candidate, BJP candidate saying Modi is not a factor here. because. Mo Earlier, Modi would go to even a municipal election and give Bhashan saying that I am, you know, pulling my weight, you know, getting extra 2 percentage vote. Didn't happen in Haryana. They were fighting on local election. And as Yogendra Yadav pointed out, even the posters, Modi's larger than life posters were not seen in Haryana. It is all local, uh, you know, uh, players, local issues, etc. Uh, and for the first time, now this, this is something which needs to be uh, analyzed a uh, little more deeply. For the first time, BJP has done better in uh, in in Haryana in assembly than it did in, in Haryana Lok in Lok Sabha. <coughs> Lok Sabha. So far, the trend has been Lok Sabha much better. You know, Modi's name, his campaign, and state uh, worse than uh, you know, not as good as Lok Sabha. In fact, much worse. In fact, 2019 they didn't get a majority yes. in Haryana, right? But now it has got reversed. Haryana, they done uh, assembly is done better. BJP is done better in assembly than in Lok Sabha. Now BJP would also be taking some lessons from this. I think when they go to Jharkhand or Maharashtra, I am willing to bet that Modi will do far less public rallies in Maharashtra than he did in the last Mar assembly elections. I think they let the local leaders uh, have much greater say. Their issues, their uh, you know prominence will be. Uh, much more, you know, displayed. Uh, th that's what my guess is. I, and and I mind you, Modi, Modi is a very, uh, very quick co course corrector. You know, yeah. If he, if he realizes that that his thing is not working so much, uh, is last minute coming and uh, making ten bhashans and getting that extra two percent not working, then he won't do it. Yeah. But I found on the ground that in Haryana there there was a, a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean, people were happy with the course corrective measures that were taken by the BJP, which perhaps helped it, them get these few uh, seats in the last leg of the election as well. The fact that Khattar was not seen in the campaign at all, and there was, was identified totally with totally Bodhi, no? with Bodhi. yeah, and he was just not seen in the campaign. They just crafted the campaign around the work done on the ground. BJP workers themselves said that we are going to the people with the work that we have done, uh, bina khachi parchi in a nokri, and and they were highlighting the work. And that Saini is a new face and he's done, he's taken uh, these decisions in the last few months and that's changed the course. And uh, voters also kind of recognize that in the sense that they have, they said that earlier things were really bad as long as Khattar was there. But when Saini was brought in, they have, um, things have gotten better. So, uh, would you say that the BJP is 
faster in its course correction that allows them to uh, in the short window from the Lok Sabha elections to the, the assembly elections they learned some quick lessons and acted on it whereas the Congress got a little complacent on the back of the five seats that they won in the Lok Sabha election and perhaps thought that this is in the bag so not so much introspection needed. That's I mean sure that's one way of looking at it in fact one of the biggest sort of criticisms of the Congress repeatedly is that when they have even a slight the slightest small edge or uh, a media victory or a political victory they very quickly become complacent and bask in in that moment but the BJP has proven time and again that it's a constantly working electoral machine and the Congress just needs to not rest ever if it wants to improve its uh, its tallies around. I think that's, so I mean, you know, you're, you're saying, are they very quick to course correct? Uh, Another way of looking at it is is the is the way you know that that people have commented that oh they make U turns even though they they so they therefore they, there is no conviction that they have to the policies on the ground they're very quick to make U turns as well there are many ways of looking at this but I think the net result based on what we've seen is that the Congress with the Lok Sabha results the way they were. Uh, and the sort of popular narrative on the ground in Haryana, which everybody got wrong. I, I'm I'm repeating that again and again and again because, you know, it's it, it's it's not just that they were taking cues from the Congress party that people got it wrong. People who were on the ground in Haryana, reporters who, you know, stumping the pavement, everybody got it wrong. Exit pollsters got it wrong. So. No one can rest. If we're a con we're not one nation, one poll. We we don't have a situation where there's an election every five years. There's an election every five months. Hmm. So which means you've got to keep working. Hmm. Right. There's no time for ten day breaks in the United States. Let me put it that way. Yeah. So all right, let's shift focus to Jammu and Kashmir um, for a little bit. The uh, over there, the national conference uh, is all set to form. The government, Omar Abdullah, is going to be chief minister. That's what's been announced by the party. The Congress has done well um, in Jammu and Kashmir as well. But as Maya was pointing out earlier, it seems that in the last few years, Congress is doing well in alliance and not so much on its own and especially in uh, areas where it's a direct fight between the BJP and the Congress that's where the Congress is found to be wanting but Maya you've traveled to Kashmir this time for the elections what was your sense on the ground and did that did this one could say a wave in favor of the NC in terms of the seats did you see that on the ground as well you know actually it, it's quite interesting because the mood shifted I mean the the few days that I was there, everybody was a bit nervous because there was no visible wave on the ground. Um, <clears throat> and Engineer Rashid's rallies were bringing in hordes of people. But I want to just re respond to something you said in when you were introducing Jammu and Kashmir. I actually don't think the Congress has done well, particularly in Jammu. So if you were to ask me, I think they've let the alliance down. The, the challenge for these results and any elected government that comes into play is there is a complete divide between Jammu and Kashmir. One can argue that's also historically been the case, but historically the Congress had a slightly stronger base in Jammu. There are no seats for the NC Congress alliance in the plains of Jammu. And if that's the segment of the population that's been so angry with the valley hegemony over the politics of Jammu and Kashmir and the national conference as its uh, and its position as a Kashmiri ethno-nationalist party. Uh, what has the Congress done to kind of break that? There were, there was speculation that the Congress had an edge in some parts of Jammu and the plains as well. Listen, don't, don't be under the assumption that <clears throat> the removal of Article 370 or the removal of 35A has gone down well everywhere in Jammu. There are people who were not happy. There were not. There were people who were saying that, you know, our jobs, our lands, everything is going away. Um, and I think there was some, there was scope to capitalize on that sentiment for the Congress as well. And I don't think they actually did as much as they could. In the valley, uh, and in the sort of hill areas of Jammu, they've got a few seats. Um, but it's a very tight majority. Congress I mean, got one seat, no, in Jammu? I mean, that's... 
not much. So, <laughs> you know. No, no, I thought you said few seats. So no, no, they've got in the hill, in the hill areas. Yeah, in the hill areas. So, I mean, they've, they've got, it, it's not something that's going to be, you know, be easy uh, going forward because I feel that they could have, they could have done a better campaign. The Congress itself could have run a better campaign in Jammu and Kashmir and they did. Actually, you know, I, I want to say something. I I spoke to Maya about uh, when the campaign was at its peak. So she she did tell me that NC there is a NC is doing very well. There is a, a big th thing for uh, Hawa in favor of NC. But look at the psychology uh, uh, that BJP's micromanagement creates. She also told me that the BJP's micromanagement. Is giving the engineer Rashid some independence out of fucking jail. They they may uh, they they may even manage to sort of disrupt uh, NC's <laughs> performance and all. So so what I'm saying is that we 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 this BJP has this effect on everybody. You know that they're, they're, <laughs> the micromanagement could could produce something. <laughs> well, I mean <laughs> the fact is that they did try. I mean there was they an effort. Try. There yeah. there were plenty of independents in the fray in Jammu and Kashmir for the first time, yeah. and when you know everybody everybody had a sense that there were people who would go into alliance with the BJP should the BJP emerge with stronger numbers. I mean, the anticipation was that the NC would make about 30, 32 seats and then there would be the BJP and the NC almost at par and then how was, how are they going to move forward? So, that was a question and don't forget the, the, the concerns about how this would work were not only about the 90 elected seats but five nominated seats that were also going to come into play and those nominees were to be determined by the left-wing governor. Now, after this result, the day before the election results, the BJP were circulating names. And the NC and the Congress had said that it should be the elected assembly that decides who these nominated MPs were. And I mean, that, that was so if you, you know, if it had worked out as the exit polls had predicted or uh, concerns had sort of borne out and there would have been a hung assembly, it would have been up for anyone. I mean, I think the majority is so slim also. That you know. So that that's really the question going forward. Like, what can this NC government do, given the fact that it's a new? Uh, I mean, they've been in power before, but it's a new political uh, landscape right now. After the reading down of Article 370, the Reorganization Act is complete. As Maya was mentioning, the five nominated members. Yes, they might not have the numerical strength to make a lot of difference, but the LG is very much there to block any kind of legislation, yeah. whether financial bills or otherwise. That should that so, is to be expected. Yeah. So. So, what is the um, uh, what are the powers that the NC government can possibly hope to exercise in the face of a, a central government which has been stung by this victory, which goes against their whole Naya Kashmir and how much people are happy in Kashmir after the reading down of See, articles? On this, uh, it, this is a very interesting question. I heard very carefully. I heard what Omar Abdullah said uh, yesterday uh, on one of the TV channels on on future courses of action immediately. So, he he said two things. He said, see, this is a promise from coming from uh, the center. That is, the prime minister has said that there would be first delimitation, then election and then statehood. So, the, he says, I would, I would ask, uh, I mean, I would expect the honorable prime minister and he, he stressed the word honorable, <laughs> that he, he better be honorable, you know, about what he promised. And he said, we... Uh, that's all. We we expect we expect him to give us a, a timeline. We expect him to tell us when uh, the statehood uh, process will uh, uh, will will you know get initiated. And uh, and he and he he says uh, and he said that we, uh, that's all he can hope for. You know, and he, if uh, and then he, he he'll respond. He'll first expect that something will come from the center. If it doesn't come, then he said he'll he'll along with Congress. Uh, determine the, the course of action, political. Course. But interestingly, Amit Malviya on, I think, India Today, he was asked this question and he was very non-committal about it. He just said that uh, Prime Minister has given his word. Now, there's no timeline. He just wanted to circle around that whole question. So, perhaps the BJP is also thinking about how I to confront this I think it will be delayed. Question. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't think statehood is coming anytime soon. And what kind um, of statehood? Uh, well, what kind of statehood will be 
for, I, I'm assuming it will be the same kind of statehood that every state has, but I don't think statehood will come soon. I think the results have not favored a BJP-led government. Um, and so, to get the center to give up some of its now accumulated powers, um, administrative powers in Jammu and Kashmir, you know, nobody wants to give that up. Nobody in the center is likely to want to give that up. So, I know Omar Abdullah has said that the, one of the first things for the elected assembly will be to, he's got two challenges, I, I would say. One is, of course, to sort of pass the resolution demanding the restoration of statehood, which is a nice way of saying we're coming to you with our cap in hand again. I went to the voters with my cap in hand. Now I'm coming to you with my cap in hand. You made this promise. Now make good on it. But he's at their mercy. The second big challenge for Omar Abdullah, and again, the two are linked and yet separate, is that because there is no representation of the BJP in the valley. Um, That's a big thing, yeah. Mm. And there is no representation of the National Conference in the Jammu Plains. How do you shake that image or reputation off of being a valley centric, Kashmiri, hegemonic? government. Um, how do you represent the people who didn't vote for you? I mean, I spoke to Omar Abdullah um, the night of the results and I think he said very clearly that he wants to assure everyone that the government that, that comes in is going to be the, a government for Jammu and Kashmir. And Kashmir. But the thing is, will the people of Jammu see it that way? Yeah. No matter what the promise And my the other question <laughs> is, which some people are raising is, how will Jammu exactly? How will Jammu see the government? Considering that BJP is on, <coughs> BJP is on most of the seats in Jammu, and so naturally Jammu's numerical representation, the government will be will be far lower than expected, right? So yeah, and also, I mean, your opposition is not fragmented; it's one entire block. Yeah. So. So I think I think before we wrap up the uh, the final question going forward, just taking off from this, is that what what would this imply for uh, the India Alliance also going ahead? Because we have two more state elections in Maharashtra and Jharkhand. After the results in Haryana, we have seen India Bloc leaders being quite critical of the Congress, and uh, even in Jammu and Kashmir, Omar Abdullah stated that they would have found, uh, they would have found the go government on their own. They perhaps did not even need the Congress. So is it is it an uphill climb for the India Alliance after the Congress? Congress's defeat in Haryana and will things change in this, Maharashtra? I think Chark? the Congress would have done better in Jammu and Kashmir had they been confident and bold enough to go and campaign more in the valley and in Jammu. The, my sense is that, I mean, the, Rahul Gandhi went for one rally to Srinagar, right? And I think a few in Jammu. My sense is that the reason the Congress was staying away from actively campaigning for the India alliances. They didn't want to get caught saying something that could be misinterpreted or <coughs> hyped up by a hyper-nationalist uh, central government and, you know, used against them in Haryana, mm. which is all about nationhood and patriotism and things like that. So, I think they were playing that <coughs> line. Now that they are going to enter a common minimum program with the National Alliance, there's a pre-poll alliance, they're going to have representation in the government. I think they'll have to be even more careful for Maharashtra and Jharkhand um, about where they sit. I mean, they may, they may be okay with statehood, but when the National Conference starts talking about Article 370, what will the Congress do? You know, these are questions, I think, for the Congress and there's no clarity on where these positions are going to fall. You know, I have a, uh, I have another take on why the uh, alliance partners uh, are immediately airing their uh, <laughs> views about Congress being, uh, you know, Congress needs to introspect, Congress needs to be more, uh, you know, the kind of accommodative, etc. I think it's a, it's a tactical thing. When Ahmadmi Party, uh, uh, Ahmadmi Party said this, uh, that Congress needs to learn lessons from Mariana. Uh, Uddhav also said, made a statement that Congress needs to, you know, uh, introspect, etc. Because they are saying this because they, they are already preparing uh, to now negotiate with the Congress, uh, uh, whether it's Delhi election uh, next year or uh, Haryana, or, or, or sorry, or uh, uh, Maharashtra, where 
there are already some tensions between uh, you know the Congress earlier before the Haryana elections. Uh, Congress is trying to subtly uh, was subtly trying to message that 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 their person uh, should should also be uh, a candidate for CM etc. You know. Sir. Nana Patole was being, you know, uh, projected. Uh, now, 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 all this, all this will undergo a review. Now, uh, the the Congress Party in Maharashtra will uh, will have to be far more accommodated to the allies. And I am personally much more confident when there are allies which act as uh, checks and balance. You know, so I see that whenever Congress is going it alone and has full uh, uh, kind of power to do whatever it wants. It kind so of you know the up, thing you know? is Rahul Gandhi was very popular in the valley after his Bharat Joro Yatra, mm -hmm. very very popular. So there, uh, but but the alliance was so poorly designed that I mean there were friendly contests between the NC and the Congress. It just didn't make sense to anybody. Like, why are both of you fighting in the same seat? I mean, we saw a bit of that in the Lok Sabha elections as well, where they gave the logic that we are in power in certain states, some parties are more yeah, powerful in this. In this so there was no need and the stakes are so high. Yeah. that. So, the, so the question really is, going forward on the back of these elections, has the Congress lost its bargaining power? And, and one, one could possibly say uh, its big brother attitude in alliances, it would have to put that aside uh, when it comes I to these. I think in Jammu and Kashmir, no. The Congress is going to say that you know the NC has done this well because you're part of the India alliance and you are the dominant party and the, I, I don't think that's necessarily untrue I think the Congress and the particularly after the Bharat Joro Yatra and the fact that they went to Kashmir with the Yatra I think uh, appealed to voters because they saw this is, you know, Mohabbat ki dukan, Nafrat ki bazaar mein Mohabbat ki dukan was, a, was something that appealed to the Kashmiri Muslim voter. And uh, so I think the NC benefited from that as well. So I don't think that they're, firstly, bargaining power aside, I think it's in everybody's interest for these alliances to stay together and not break yeah. up over ego battles. And I think that's the big challenge. Really. Also, you know, one more point, Kong. At some level, Congress probably realizes that uh, that Rahul Gandhi's image uh, has got a big boost over the last, say, you know, since Bharat Jodo Yatra, and and in UP also, certain surveys showed that he is quite popular among the youth. CSDS survey, uh, in fact, almost like Modi was two percentage points below Rahul. In, yeah. in, you know, he, Haryana also we heard that he, the youth of Haryana. Uh, had a lot of uh, thing for Rahul, you know, regard for Rahul, and the 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 paradox that Congress today faces is, while Rahul's stature is going up, their organization is not keeping up. You know, so as long as their organization uh, grassroots is not in place, Congress also will not be able to uh, assert itself beyond a point with allies. For instance, for instance, wherever Shiv Sena Udhav is strong, he'll have to go with. Depend on Shiv Sena. Wherever Sharad Pawar is strong, they will have to, because their cadres are very strong. They will have to defer to and, the and regional. In, in, in Jharkhand, parts. wherever uh, Soren and uh, their uh, networks are strong, be, because Congress doesn't have the networks, you know, so they realize it. Yeah. Even in Delhi, they will have to concede yeah. to the Ahmadmi party. Uh, if they've they already said they won't. Because, because, I think. If, if, if earlier they have said, yeah, they don't want an alliance for Delhi. But if, uh, I mean, earlier in Haryana also they said that there won't be any alliance, but then they started talks and that fell through. So, I, I, I don't think there will be an alliance again. What is currently happening is Rahul gains in, uh, has gained in stature, very popular. So he goes to UP in Lok Sabha, makes uh, a big pitch and and transfers uh, and a lot of votes. Uh, even to Samajwadi Party. Samajwadi also benefits. So that is inevitable. Even in Delhi, he will go and make speeches and uh, in many places, AAP will benefit. So I think Congress will have to settle. Uh, I don't think there will be an alliance in Delhi. No, uh, if there is, I am saying. 
Uh, all right, so many questions for the Congress to introspect on and also for the BJP on what it does about its promise of uh, statehood in Jammu and Kashmir and how it plans to deal with a new elected government uh, in the Union Territory, one that's new after 10 years, in fact. Um, thank you so much, Venu and Maya, for joining us and to the viewers for joining us for another edition of The Wire